to 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 expose him to uh, to 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 uh, the type of music that grown-ups are playing now, the Correct. dance music. Correct. Yeah. I was scared to do that, and I said, "Play this chord, man." And mm. I got this little finger stretch. Mm. E minor mm. nine. Mm. E minor nine. Oof. Do you like that sound? Oh, I like the sound. Amazing. <laughs> see, see, major seven. Oh, I like that sound. Yeah. B B B six seven seven root uh, uh, seven with the B bass. Oh, I love it. You know, and, 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 and then uh, uh, he would take a few quotes. I remember the first song I taught him was What You Do For Love. <laughs> Just, I guess, one, two, three, four quotes, mm. right? C major seven, uh, B seven, uh, sharp five, I think it is, yes. Mm. Uh, then it's just E minor nine, and it's an A6 with a 7 in it. Mm. And, and, and he just like, he played it over and over and over. And, and um, the children started coming. Children started coming. And, uh, and uh, all kinds of, some of them had their own instrument. It was the one girl came to the saxophone. And, wow. And I couldn't play the saxophone, but she was from Settlers, mm. with a good read music. And so I had to teach myself now uh, what a B flat instrument is, what for E flat yeah, instrument yeah, yeah. is. <coughs> and I so I taught them all the number system so that they could work with the number system. So if you have a, a chord pattern, and so it was the number systems. Yeah. Here. And and I also taught Kurtley how to tell the saxophone what notes to play. Right. So if if it's a B flat instrument, because it's B flat. It's toned down, so you must, the sex, you must tell, you must tell that it's in C. Mm. If you're playing C, then uh, you, your key is C, then the, the, the B flat instrument must, which way now? It's a toned down, so it must go a tone up, so it's D. Mm. So key is D. And then uh, E flat, if you play C, if you ask the, the you play a chord C, say, play your C. Then it turns out to be E flat. Mm. So you gotta bring him down. So it's a tone and a half down. Yeah. So now he knows that. So so I could leave him. So he became like, I think that's how he became like a musical, musical director. Yeah. yeah. Because he could conduct it. He could tell us uh, this the tenor sax. And that was at sex, what, at what age was he then? Twelve, thirteen. Yeah. Uh, I think at, at the first year that uh, we started this thing. I, he was already playing Heinrich Isaac stuff by, by September and he couldn't play keyboards when he came there. Wow. He was playing all Heinrich Isaac's uh, stuff, he was playing Jonathan Rupay stuff. Rupay's stuff, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and very simply, but he was doing it, you know. And then as a group, they all played together and it sounded good and I said, wow, we can play now. And then we started our concerts Ooh. and then everybody was so impressed and then eventually landed up at Artscape, mm. I think as Joey Foree that was also helping us along. Mm. And we had a big thing that was community chest that I had something there. I yes. We had everything about it. But those kids hit that, hit that stage, wow. And, uh, but at that time, we were still playing uh, mostly American music, mm. right? And then after that, I realized that also, look from my roots, what? what it, how great was that to go up that hill and go and play in that little pondocky there? Yeah. Listen to these people play. Yeah. I said, but I, I come from that one. What is Cape Town? Cape Town's music is Cape Town. Mm. And, 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 and in my young days in Cape Town, it was Pacific Express, it mm. was all those bands, it was uh, Four Sounds, mm. it was Big Daddy, it was Little Wing, Little Wing. Mm. it was, uh, uh, what's his name again? Mike Quahua. Uh, my co-host band, uh, um, Drive. Drive, yeah, at the Goldfinger. Drive, and then Drive, and then we, 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 but a lot of them were playing still American music. Correct, correct. There was covers but and the originals, yeah. Yeah, but there was a mixture. Yeah. And I just got this feel, like, hey, Abdullah, Ibrahim, it's, uh, his music, you know, sort of, I went to a show of his and I was so, Vittentoni on the bass. Mm, mm. And I, and I was just blown away and I thought, like, you know, this, this Guma music is nice, man. 
and later on, then I met Ramon. You know, at, yes. And, and Ramon was playing his music, but his own stuff. Yes. And I loved it, and I bought his album. And so, then Kurt he says, "I want that album." Mm. So I gave it. In a week. And now you plays now he plays all Ramon stuff. It was yeah. a week. In a week. I at Kaleidoscope, he never... played he played Ramon, and Ramon was blown away because he yes. couldn't believe Kurtley had actually learned. Uh, one of his songs, yes. down pet. Sons and uh, uh, captains. Cap sons and captains. Yeah. That. And 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 uh, the nice thing is that afterwards, then took them on a workshop with Ramon mm. out at uh, the Lapa. Yeah. And I said, Ramon, uh, I would like you to ex yeah. Kurtley plays this song. Uh, I want to carry across a message to Kurtley that when you do compose, because he was composing his own little things. Mm, mm, I mm. said. There must be a story behind it, and you must be able to tell the story. Mm. So, uh, sons and captains, please tell, tell him tell the, the story, story about yeah. it. What, what's it all wow. about? The Guma Kings, etc. Yeah, I, couldn't re I can't repeat the exact words, but Ramon gave it so nice and clearly to them. The story just fell into place. It yeah. says, you know, this part of the song uh, has a churchy sound in it. So, that is very much part of Cape Town, Correct. church music. The, Correct. And then, then you have the Guma rhythm sitting underneath all the time. Yeah. That's the book up. Yeah. And then there's a there's an area where and then the jazz comes in there's some jazz ooh, solos. Ooh. Then there's an area where uh, uh, you can hear the, the the scale that he uses. Ooh. It's 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 like a Eastern scale, it's ooh. like a, a Egyptian like, like scale. Like a half half notes and yeah. very much like what Idris Outeb Idris Galeta yes. was doing in Malay tone power. Yeah. And so he says not that if you listen carefully, you will hear the, the, the Imam calling uh, 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 in those scales. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so it was. So the story, the whole song came to life. Absolutely. And also the name. And that's what song. we need to do. Yeah. Pass that on to the, the younger the generation. Name, the name of the song came from from the the, the people that put mm. uh, uh, Cape jazz music on the stage, yeah. which was uh, uh, Robbie Jansen. And, and Hilton Shoulder, the the uh, Harold Jackson, <coughs> Harold as well. Yeah, but but for a specific song <coughs> it was uh, uh, Sons and Captains was Mac McKenzie, Mac McKenzie, Mac McKenzie. Yeah. So the Guma Captains, Guma Captains of Cape Town, and there was other ones, Sons of Sons Table of Table Mountain. Mountain. Yeah. So you combine those two. Yeah. Which is yeah. They the ones that they got, the music was there. Yeah. But it wasn't really. Put in the uh, original music wasn't put on the stage, and yeah. they started yeah. putting on the stage. Yeah. And so, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So Ramon is one of Kurt's heroes. I'm sure. Uh, the Jazz Yard Academy then, the first three years, uh, it, we, it was purely driven by, by passion and love. There was no money involved. The teachers mm. that got came and go went, and that put a lot of pressure on me. Absolutely. I think that's why also at my age. I, became a lot of stressful. Stressful, yeah. Uh, uh, but I managed to do it for three mm. years and then we decided now we need to pay a stipend or something or do something. To the to the yeah. teachers, yeah. So we do our fundraisers and money would go towards the teachers mm. and, and and the things changed and we got regular teachers that we could do. Mm. But in those first three years, wow, well, it was a battle. Mm. I had to do a lot of times I'm alone there and, and we got to go and perform an artscape and I must go through all the songs I must make sure, I must tell everyone, arrange of the music, I must, play say, I must say uh, what the timing was, I must stopwatch, that song is so long, let's see, let's time how long, we're going to cut out these pieces, yeah. okay, we, we aim at, at, at three, three minutes maximum, three yeah. and a half minutes, and uh, because on the stage there, if you, if you didn't finish all the songs, they cannot stop you. Yeah. If you didn't finish in a certain time, and what's going to happen? You, you because we got so many kids that want to perform, you got to give everyone a chance. Some Somebody is to not going to get on yeah. stage, so yeah. it's important that we keep our timing, so yeah. that discipline yeah. into place. Afterwards, when the Jazz Yard Academy, when I, 2018, when I decided I have to retire now because I had my grandchild and I wasn't giving attention to him, mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling so strong anymore driving around a lot, you know, loading instruments and offloading instruments, that, um, uh, uh, that when I then retired, I still had one job, and that was to do to, 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 to a presentation for, in, for 
Congreg member ne, in Pumo Lelo, who? Tr trust, uh, and uh, that was through uh, community chest. Okay. And 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 then I also applied things that I haven't applied to my business as to what, why should they give us funds? Give me reasons. Mm, mm. And um, uh, you know they want to know is it is it is it uh, um, what's the viability of this? this, mm. this is it sustainable? Is it sustainable? Is one of the questions. Correct. So um, uh, is it can you? Can it be applied, uh, duplicated elsewhere? Mm, 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 is, is it a model that can be reused? Um, is it? Does it? What difference does it make to the society? Mm. In other words, uh, what's the right word? Um, uh, Transformation. Can it transform yeah. the society? Impact. Yeah. What? What is? What's the impact of that? It has on society. And yeah. what makes this organization different to anything else? Mm. So I could say. In that part, with it, what makes it different is yeah. the fact that these kids are so good, and that even university students are, are looking at them with big eyes and saying, "How can they be playing this and they're only this age?" Correct. Correct. Was well, because my approach uh, was very different. They started off in reverse to what the schools are doing. The schools yeah. start with this: you you play what's on this. Piece. The theoretical the side theoretical. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that. Like with me, in sitting in the church, the wind blew the thing away, oh, yeah. and I was lost. So now you must make a plan. Yeah, let's make a plan. And I started also that way where they would play for the fun of it, and that is why they could improvise mm. because they felt that freedom to improvise because mm. it sounded good, mm. and I gave them a lot of freedom to do their own thing. Yeah, they work out their own little breaks and things, mm. you know. I let them do it, and. Uh, when I and we got that we got that twenty five thousand rand from I think it was twenty five thousand rand yeah. granted. And then I uh, of course now I'm off the scene and uh, unfortunately the kids that had been with me from the beginning decided no they want to form their own band. Mm -hmm. So I failed there in, 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 in carrying that through mm -hmm. to, because they went out the age which was a difficult age, sixteen, fifteen yeah. uh, and uh, and uh, you know they it's well we can't play and, and the applause the applause is the applause, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's yeah and and, and the girls <laughs> <laughs> so these were the <laughs> but not realizing that you know that they they started playing they had they did they they, they, had, they had some manager I don't know who he is but anyway he was I think he was actually the wrong choice. Um, uh, because they were playing at all these places where people were drinking and they were playing so regularly that they would be tired. Mm. They would tire them out mm. and they were earning pennies really, for all that effort. Mm. That left them no time for the school studies, left them no time to actually uh, create their music, mm. and that, especially Kurt Leon, who mm. was the creator. And I was worried about this, and I, and I eventually, and I didn't have the energy anymore because I was getting this, this getting sick this year, you know. Mm. So I, I was looking around and I found Faisal Peterson mm. from the pedestrians. Asked, and I said, Faisal, you've been so successful with these people, Bradley Prince and all that, and are they real modeled students, you know, going through university and everything? And can't you help me? Because I. I, I, I don't have the energy, but they need to learn business sense, they need to know, to learn things that I didn't do with them in, in the beginning is, is how to behave as a musician mm. if you want to be accepted. And so Faisal started with them, and then we had some of them falling out saying, ah, you want to break up the band, because we wanted to get a meeting with parents, and parents all yes. agree with us. Yes, yes, yes. Because parents who saw they were wasting their time with us, but they were having a good time, you see. Mm -hmm. It's in making no money. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, then Fidel's now busy with him now. Mm -hmm. and, and he's got, Curtis is the one that listens the most. So Curtis already got his life organized. Mm -hmm. 
he's been taken on tours of Faisal through Cape Town and taken through the book up and taken to all the historical places and explained what is this building, what is that building, mm, mm. how does that fit into our history mm. uh, of, of District 6 and all that. So when you're writing your music, you can write you about understand these things the and history you understand behind them. it. Yeah. And that's also what I didn't have time to do, you see. Mm. And also Faisal knew more about that than what I do, because I grew up in Iceland. Mm. And, um, and then uh, also the, 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 the business sense of being on time. So they had, a, for example, he got the gig. He, says, he said to them, here's the list of things that, and you're grown-ups now. Mm. And I don't want to preach these things to you, mm. but you read this. These are the things I want you to adhere to, mm. the ground rules. Mm. And, and some of them didn't take it seriously. Mm. So, for example, he, had a, uh, he organized a gig with Sammy Weber, where they... Sammy was going to play the original song of his first time Ooh. on the stage Ooh. at Radisson Red yes. with these guys backing. And so there was a rehearsal time for them. They were an hour late for the rehearsal. Ooh. See, and that was, and Faisal was so upset. And, he's, and then he started coming down on him. And then uh, that was one time, and then there was a photo shoot. Ooh. And uh, one of them decided, no, he's going up country, it's a party, family party, he can't make it. So the photo shoot that, and it's a free photo shoot, you know. Then they had to go on the stage with Express, Expresso, and they probably were partying all the night, and they came in the morning. Uh, one or two of them forgot their words because they had the questions that they were to ask, and they were obviously tired. And it's only now that they're now starting to see the sense because now they see now five laws took in sense. And mm. that is something that if I had a, now that the energy. another five years <laughs> of energy, if I had started at the age of 40 mm. and I had sense to do something about mm. the situation in Bordeaux, mm. I think uh, I could have inspired a lot more people to duplicate myself. Mm. Uh, I, I, so, so, okay. so. So tell us, because we're referencing that you you retired, you can't do it any longer. Do you want to tell everyone, uh, because the reason I'm here interviewing yes. you is because uh, we, we have found out uh, via Gino, via the grapevine, that, that you've been bedridden for a while, and I mean wheelchair or bedridden. Can you tell us how how that started? Because uh, it started beginning of this year with your lungs. Yes. yes. Uh, just give us a little bit of a story of how yeah. you got to be. Because if you can't see it, <laughs> he's in a wheelchair. And thank God for this wonderful wheelchair. It's donated to me as well. Which was donated as well. But how did it start, uh, Chris? And, yes. and, and, and I do believe God is going to restore those years to you. And I do believe that the energy, you're going to have it all back and, and God willing, the operation is going to be successful. But how did you get to be where you are now? Yes, I, I think that um, I took my body for granted as a young man and so this, things are catching up with me. Currently, I'm waiting for an operation to take a work and it could be months that I'm waiting. Mm. Uh, it's for lower spine uh, lumbar. Uh, um, herniated disc, mm. or was a disc uh, collapsed and pushed through and I was pushing against the nerve. Right. Which means that... So you're, it's I, excruciating, the pain? If I sit. Mm. So even here now I've got pain, but I'm, I'm a bit drugged, so you can <laughs> see that. <laughs> He's legally drugged, okay? It's his medication. <laughs> so so um, this, this was a gift from, a, from one of my clients because... Mm. I believe if you do work, and this is also a lesson that young people should learn, you do it to the best of your ability, and, and when you walk away, that the client smiles and is really happy. Mm. And this client was so appreciative, of, and I only knew him for a few months. Mm. And I did this uh, uh, machine for him, I programmed the machine. It's a very involved machine, and it works perfectly. And, I, and, I, and when I, he said to me, just, Clock the hours and then afterwards you 
Let me know how much is... Yeah. And when I told him he got such a fright, because I was using our normal calculation for our... Because I was a small business myself Correct. and my business Correct, partner. Yeah. Uh, but we're very dependent on, 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 on each other. So the one is not working. There's no income. For the other, yeah. Times, a lot of times we know, understand we, we know salary for us. And you've been, you've been basically unemployed since the beginning of the year. Since the year. Yeah. And I'm a very proud person. I won't go and ask for help. But, yeah. And, and I'd rather try and work out plans myself and manipulate my bank accounts or the credit card into there just to make sure when it's there and they try and make get the other money somehow, you know. So it's been a hard time for me. So it started with a, with a lung infection and I believe it wasn't from uh, by, uh, uh, a biological infection, mm. but it was actually on the machine that I was working on. There was this fiber wow. material. And, wow. and, uh, and so you, you, you breathed it in? I must have inhaled a, a bit of fiber. Wow. And uh, it infected, your infected lung. my lung, and my whole my left lung was collapsed, and it was like just wow. half of it working. So a um, doctor said to me, "I don't have to go to hospital, but uh, at home I have to live under hospital conditions." So I couldn't to move yes. around. I yes. could go to the toilet and so on, but I couldn't move around. I could breathe very hard to breathe, pain and all that. And sometimes you have to psychologically. Uh, control yourself because Correct. you can get heart attack if you wow. breathe too fast, you know. And I managed to with antibiotics to get it down and where I was now fit after the, more than a month, a month and a half. Mm. And then I went back to the doctor, I had x rays, and he says, he's happy to say that I'm, my lungs are clear now. Praise God. And then I said, okay, good, now I can go back to work. And I went back and I had to go do some work again. I'm sitting, my work was just sitting in front of a computer for hours. Mm. That is my job. Mm. And, uh, and uh, my mother actually commented when I had to go to the shops one Saturday, it was a hot day, and I mm. had a, I, I used a wheel, uh, push her on a wheelchair because mm. she can't walk long distances. And then uh, she said, but what's wrong with your right leg? She's like double the size of your left leg. I look and, and I actually, Got no one will say, no, there's nothing wrong, and then I said, no, there's something wrong here. But you couldn't feel it? No, no. But your leg was just swelling? It was like that. And so, 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 so I went to the doctor. Uh, first, I didn't want to go. I said, no, it's going to be okay. She phoned my sister in England, who is good in human biology. And she said, that's deep vein thrombosis. You must go right away. Wow. <laughs> and it was. And the doctor said to me, immediately to the hospital. And I landed up in Tigerberg Hospital. And I was there for almost a month in the hospital as well. Because they they were at one time wanted to put the filter in. Oh. Because it was so dangerous. It was and you, so you had clots, clots all, down, all leg. down your leg. So if a clot breaks free. Free and hits your heart. You get a, a, a Absolutely. embolism. Um, um, uh, remember the, 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 the morning uh, show on... TV, SABC2, Vuyu. Mm -hmm. Not Vuyu. Vuyu. <laughs> Vuyu. Yes. Uh -huh. Do you remember him? He was a pleasant guy, man. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. This lady they were doing. Yes, that. yes, yes. And you remember he died. At, what? Uh, at, and he was fit. He used to go um, uh, run uh, sure. marathons and things. And he took his son down from, he was in Joburg, and he took his son down to Bloemfontein because they liked rugby and there was a rugby match and they went to go watch this. And he was sitting there and he got up and he just collapsed, boom, dead. So that Palmary was... Pulmonary embolism, wow. exactly that thing. Where the clots are there, you're not aware of it. Yeah. It breaks away. Yeah. And it goes to the heart or it goes to the lungs or it goes to your brain. Wow. So that's what I had. So it was a dangerous situation. But they went to source where it's coming from. So... Uh, I had to do all the tests. I had to go through all the gastroscopy, that thing, to swallow in your stomach. I had to find it with any, and all the x rays and, and, um, and uh, scans, all <coughs> scans. And I must say one thing about, about Tigerberg Hospital, they've got the best doctors there. Sure. So, but the only problem is the waiting. Ooh. But if you can get in, like my doctor says, it's an emergency, you must get in. So, so I got in. And so I was lucky. 
But this time around, I have to wait very long. Now what's happened now is that I just woke up one morning. I always had a back problem from, from school days, from high jump, cycling. Uh, there was a lot of impact on my, my Lower spine. Back. Lower yeah. back. But it was never so that I couldn't recover from it. If it's really bad, I go to the chiropractor and it's fixed, or I go to the doctor, I get the injection, and it's over. Just rest a little bit. But I, I just woke up. I didn't even carry. I, I used to carry a lot of things with the with, with JJ the academy. You remember all the incidents? Yes, up yes. Up and down, yes. up and down. Because we didn't, uh, at that time we had, we had the school, but we couldn't leave the instruments there, so we had to carry it, ride it from our house. And yeah. I had to, like four trips, you know. And then you got to still set it up. And uh, so this latest one is, 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 is bad. Mm -hmm. And I really have, you know, crippled our business in the process of this cash flow. And so I'm sitting, having to uh, talk to my friends and say, and then, they ask, where are you? And then I have, to, I have to tell them what it is. And then she know. Mm -hmm. said, no, he's going to talk to people. They're going to do yeah. as a yeah. concert going. And that's where you heard about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I inbox you. Because I, I, I didn't know uh, I didn't know of the lungs, the deep vein thrombosis. I didn't know about the back. I didn't know that yeah. you were down. And so... And the initial cost for, 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 for this back yeah. was... Was quite a lot of a lot of money too. I mean, yeah. to to have because I couldn't do the tag no, tag we had a three to four months wait. Right. And her pain was so excruciating. I could I felt like I couldn't faint anymore. Yeah. So I so so I went to Louis Lipo. So they said now I can pay it off. Oh. Well, it's like twelve thousand rand for the for a for a scan, you know, a, a wow. MRI scan. Yeah. Just X-rays. Yeah. And was, but it was started. And with that result, I could now go and sit and wait there. But then I couldn't, I knew I couldn't sit long. Mm. So I, I panicked about that. And then this good friend of mine who I did this machine for, mm. asked him, can't you just modify this old wheelchair I've got at the back here and make it so that I can lie on it? Uh, then, then, then somebody can take me there, at least I can be lying. And Correct. He says, no, no. I said, okay, now it's fine. Next day he comes with this thing. Wow. Which is an amazing thing. The which whole which back collapses back is, and it stretches you out like a, a stretcher. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so Chris, what, uh, in terms of this interview about your life, your music, your involvement, the young people, the Jazz Yard Academy, yes, you may not be uh, physically involved, but your heart, your passion is still there. And uh, many of them yeah. have come forward to offer their services uh, to you. Uh, for this uh, fundraiser. What is your last message to young people, young musicians? I, th I, I think I know what it's going to be. But I, think, I think the last thing that I learned that was very important was that you have to associate your, your love of music with business. Yes. Uh, otherwise, you are going on the wrong track. Yeah. So take it seriously. Take your schoolwork seriously. Don't fool around so much. Mm. Get out of the situation that you've been born in. And your parents are trapped in. Get yeah. out of that situation. And, uh, and and also do things for other people. Give back. Mm. The World Children's Prize uh, organization where these children were privileged to go there. To Sweden? To Sweden? To Sweden, yeah. yes. Through... Uh, 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 to Winberg, the, uh, 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 Ma, uh, Dr. Marlene Winberg. Dr. Marlene and, Winberg, and Shen Winberg. Shen yeah. And I want to say thank you to the to person them, yeah. who actually uh, 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 linked them up with me. Yes. And that is uh, Sean Johannes. Okay. Sean, Sean Johannes, thank you. Thank you, Sean. And, and, and Sean said to Shen, go to Chris. Yeah. And then he said, it sends to me only once two people. And uh, he wanted me to go with also that time. And, and then you couldn't go. I, I said no, 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 as well. no, no. It was the first time. Oh. And I said to him, no, I'd rather sacrifice my opportunity and for another kid. Because yeah. I don't believe that. I knew the kids can't play two men. They don't know. Uh, they yeah. need. Uh, they need three. Four, yes, or four. Five. Yeah. I decided. I said to him, let's do a, 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 a exchange audition. Yeah. 
He says, yeah, my, my friend, bring it. he's got most of the stuff. He's got mm -hmm. a keyboard mm -hmm. there. I'm mm -hmm. just bringing a basic drum set, mm -hmm. guitars. So was that the first time Shen heard them? And, and Shen's eyes popped up. Yes. And, and unfortunately, I was going to take five. But I didn't tell him what was going to happen. I just said to the boys, trust me, this is a life-changing thing. Mm -hmm. Be ready at six o'clock. Yeah. Be ready. Your instruments, you're going to play for somebody, but this is life-changing. And four in bond devil listened to me. Yeah. But the one Yen Belbo saxophonist, uh, Joshua. Yeah, yeah, I know Josh, yeah. He was off and he didn't tell his parents where he was gone, his girlfriend or something. Oh my goodness. And he must out. Wow. So, so if, if I had all five, I'm sure they would have said five. Yeah. They listened to the four of them, he took those videos and he sent it to to the CEO of World Children's and Spice, Mag Wonderful. Magnus. Yeah. And Magnus came back the same night. He says he went out oh, for four, four. So I have an association, a permanent association with them. They always come to me and ask me for musicians. Wonderful. Um, at the moment, it's not only they want the best quality. So Ooh. if the children are not, not quite ready at the Jazz of the Academy, then unfortunately, Chen would say no, it's not good enough Ooh. because I'll send them videos. And they have accepted. You spoke about a dance group? A, a, a dance group from uh, from Google Ed. from Google Ed yes. as well. First, uh, the first trip was from Kai Licha. Yes, you know, yes. Two boys and two girls. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, well. yeah. So that was 2018. 2019, they they uh, were, first of all they were asked to write little essays about mm. the trip mm. coming back, and I immediately got our boys onto it. I said, write this essay. Uh, these questions there. What have you learned about how to trip girls? Quite a few questions like that, respect and all that. And they all did their work because I put them under pressure. I said, do it. I want it tomorrow or yeah. day after tomorrow. Yeah. They did it. And sent it off. Magnet said, fantastic. And uh, then, then, a, uh, then, a, then a letter came back. Because you did this, you were invited to Sweden again for next wow, year. Wow, fantastic. And the same boys. And the uh, children from Kai Richer didn't do it. And they were unfortunately disqualified. Oh, okay. And they, they went to Google and they got children from there. Yeah. They got two girls and a boy to, to go. And uh, this year, next year, next year, they have, for next year they've chosen, they said, they, even though Kirtley is of age, you better be under 18. Okay. Uh, because once you're 18, you're an adult, mm. and they can't protect you the way they can if you are 17. If you land up in jail for some mm, years, mm, mm. they can't get you out. Correct. Uh, but if you are uh, 17 and under, you fall under the protection, even hospitalization, all those things. But they said, if they do take somebody 18, it will be at their own risk. And they decided that Kirtley was worth it. Wow, So wonderful. Kirtley is selected to go next year. Kirtley, do you see how blessed you are? <laughs> Fantastic. And, well, and, yeah. and from the videos that I showed Shane, he was very impressed. Another little youngster, his name is also Joshua. Okay. He's a singer. And uh, he was with the, with the Jazz Art Academy then only for three months. Mm -hmm. And he selected as well. Fantastic. So he's, his family is overjoyed. And then, uh, as a drummer, uh, um, a drummer because uh, they asked me to find a girl drummer and, and fortunately they weren't mm. too happy that our drummer changed it can be. Mm. was at that level yet. Mm. Mm. They wanted to have more of the level of the guys that came before. And so I found Lance Roder mm. and I said, Lance, do me a favor, I need your advice. Tell me about a girl that is under 18 that is very good drummer. Mm. Mm. He immediately opened his hand. Carla Williams. Mm. So Carla is going, well done Carla. Wonderful. She will also be playing there. At the Fantastic. Yes. So this is the interview. This is Chris Madison, <coughs> founder and starter of the Jazz Yard Academy, who is now in a wheelchair. And we are going to do another video to tell you a little bit about what we are going to do. Bye-bye everybody.